at the beginning. It is spring, moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black, the cobble street silent, the hunched quarters in Robert's Wood limping invisible down to the slow black, slow black, crow black, fish boat bobbing sea. Hush, the babies are sleeping. The boys are dreaming wicked of the bucking ranches of the night and the jolly rogered sea. And the anthracite statues of the horses sleep in the fields. And the cows in the byres and the dogs in the wet-nosed yards and the cats nap in the slant corners or lope sly, streaking and needling on the one cloud of the roofs. You can hear the dew fall and the hushed town breathing. Only your eyes are unclosed to see the black and folded town fast and slow asleep. Listen, it is night moving in the streets. The processional salts the musical wind in Coronation Street and Cockle Row. It is the grass growing on a regular hill. Dew fall, star fall, the mist of milk wood. Listen, it is night in the chill, squat chapel. Hemming and bonnet and brooch and bombazine black. Butterfly choker and boot lace bow. Coughing like nanny goats, sucking mintos. Forty winking hallelujah. Night in the foray, quiet as a domino. In Oki Milkman's lofts like a mouse with gloves. In Daybread's bakery, flying like black flour. It is tonight in Donkey Street, trotting silent with seaweed on its hooves, along the cockled cobbles. It is night, neddying among the snuggery of babies. Time passes. This time passes. Come closer now. From where you are. You can hear their dreams. Captain Cat, the retired blind sea captain, asleep in his bunk in the seashell, chip and bottle, chip shape, best cabin of Schooner House, dreams of never such seas as any that swamp the decks of his SS Kid Willie, bellying over the bedclothes and jellyfish slippery, sucking him down salt deep into the Davy Dump, where the fish come, biting up, and nibble him down with wishbone and the long drowned and nuzzle up to him. Remember me, Captain? Dancing Williams. I lost my step in Nantucket. Do you see me, Captain? The white bone talking. I'm Tom Fred, the donkey man. We shared the same girl once. Her name was Mrs. Probert. Rosie Probert. 33 Duck Lane. Come on up, boys. I'm dead. Hold me, Captain. I'm Jonah Jarvis. Come to a bad end. Very enjoyable. Alfred Pomeroy Jones, sea lawyer, born in mumbles, sung like a linnet, crowned you with a flagon, tattooed with mermaids, thirst like a dredger, died of blisters. This skull at your ear hole is... Curly Beaven! Tell my auntie it was me who pawned the Ormolu clock. Uh, aye, aye, Curly. Tell my missus, no, I never. I never done what she said I never. Yes, they did. And who brings coconuts and shawls and parrots to my Gwen now? How's it above? Is there rum and lava bread? Bosoms and robins? Concertinas? Ebenezer's bell? Fighting and onions? And sparrows and daisies? Did Liz in a jam jar? Buttermilk and whippets? Rockabye baby? Washing on the line? And old girls in the sun? How's the tennis in Dallas? Who milks the cows and maize? When she smiles, is there dimples? What's the smell of parsley? Oh, my dead tears. From where you are, you can hear in Cockle Row in the spring moonless night, Miss Price, dressmaker and sweet shopkeeper, dream of her lover, tall as the town clock tower, champs and syrup gold mane, whacking thigh and piping hot, thunderbolt based and barnacle breasted, flailing up the cockle with his eyes like blow lamps and scooping low over her lonely, loving, Hot water bottle, bottle. Look, bottom, we price! Sister Maud Edwards! I'm a draper, mad with love. I love you more than all the flannel in Calico, Candlewick, Dimity, Crash, Tussor, Crepon, Creton, Poplin, Muslin, <laughs> Ticking and Twill, and the whole cloth hall of the world. I have come to take you away to my emporium on the hill where the change hums on wires. 
throw away your little bed socks and your Welsh wool knitted jacket, I will warm the sheets like an electric toaster. I will lie by your side like the Sunday roast. I will knit you a wallet of forget-me-not blue for the money to be comfy. I will warm your heart by the fire so you can slip it under your vest when the shop is closed. No fun, no fun, before the mice gnaw at your bottom drawer. Will you yes, say? Yes, ma. And all the bells of yes. the towns and the hills shall ring for our wedding. Come on. Drift up the dark. Come up the drifting sea dark street now in the dark sea sign like the sea. To the Bible black airless attic over Jack Black the cobbler's shop. We're alone. And savagely, Jack Black sleeps in a nightshirt tied to his ankles and dreams of chasing the naughty couples down the grass green gooseberry double bed of the wood, flogging the spit and the sawdust, <laughs> driving the bare bold girls from the sixpenny hops of my nightmares. <sighs> <laughs> And in the little pink eyed cottage next to the undertakers, lie alone the seventeen snoring gentle stone of Mr. Waldo, rabbit catcher, barber, herbalist, cat doctor, quack. His fat pink hands, palms up over the edge of the patchwork quilt, his black boots neat and tidy in the washing basin. His bowler on a nail above the bed, a milk stout and a slice of cold red pudding under the pillow. And dripping in the dark, he dreams of This little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef, and this little piggy had none. And this little piggy went <coughs> all the way home to Waldo! Waldo! Ah, uh, yes, blood and love. <laughs> oh, what will the neighbor say? What will the name of poor Mrs. Waldo? What she puts up with. Never should have been. Yeah, didn't have to. Same as her mother. There's a husband for you. That is his father. And you know where he ended up in the asylum. Crying for his mom. Every Saturday. He hasn't got a leg. And carrying on. With that Mrs. Beatty Morris. Up in the chorus. See her baby? He's got his nose. Makes my heart bleed. What he'll do for a drink. He sold canola on her sewing machine. Falling in the gutter. She's talking to lamp folks. Using language. Singing in the W. Poor Mrs. Waldo. <laughs> oh, Waldo! Waldo! <laughs> Hush, blood, we love. I'm widower Waldo now. Waldo! Waldo! Yes, I'm wrong. What will the neighbors say? What will the neighbors? Laugh as a chimney, ringing doorbells, breaking windows, making mud pies, stealing currants, chalking words, sawing the bushes, playing moochins, send him to bed without any supper, give him set of hugs and lock him in the dark, off to the reformatory, off to the reformatory, learn him with a slipper on his BTM. Waldo! Waldo! What are you doing with our Maddie? Give us a kiss, Maddie Richards. Give us a penny, then. I only got a half penny. Lips is a penny. Take this woman, Maddie Richards. Chelsea Prothero. Effie Beaven. Will the glue pot, Lodwin Bowen. To be your awful wedded wife. <laughs> now, in her iceberg white, hallway longer, crinoline nightgown. Under virtuous polar sheets in her spruced and scoured dust-defying bedroom in trig and trim bay view. A, a house for paying guests at the top of the town. Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard, widow twice. Of Mr. Ogmore, Benoleum retired. And Mr. Pritchard, failed bookmaker who, maddened by besoming, swabbing, scrubbing, the voice of the vacuum cleaner and the fume of polish, ironically swallowed disinfectant. <laughs> Fidgets in a rim sleep, wakes in a dream, and nudges in the ribs, dead Mr. Ogmore, dead Mr. Pritchard, ghostly on either side. Mr. Ogmore, Mr. Pritchard, it is time to inhale your balsam. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Ogmore. Oh, Mrs. Pritchard. Soon it will be time to get up. Give me your tasks in order. I must put my pajamas in the drawer marked pajamas. I must take my cool bath, which is good for me. I must wear my flannel band to ward off sciatica. I must dress behind the curtain and put on my apron. I must blow my nose. In the garden, if you please. In a piece of tissue, which I afterwards burn. I must take my salts, which are nature's friend. 
I must boil the drinking water because of germs. I must take my herb tea, which is free from tannin. And have a charcoal <laughs> biscuit, which is good for me. I may smoke one pipe of asthma mixture. In the woodshed, if you please. And dust the parlor and spray the canary. <laughs> I must put on my rubber gloves and search the peak for fleas. I must dust the blinds and then I must raise them. And before you let the sun in, mind it wipes its shoes. In butcher beans, gossamer beans, daughter and school teacher, brimming deep, daintily ferrets under a fluttering hummock of chicken's feathers. In a slaughterhouse house that has chintz curtains and a three-piece suite, and finds with no surprise, a small rough ready man with a bushy tail, drinking <laughs> in a paper counter. At last, my love! Sighs Gossamer Beanin, and the bushy tail wags, rude and ginger. Help! Rise, Morgan Morgan, the organist, in his dream. <laughs> There is perturbation and music in Coronation Street. All the spouses are <coughs> honking like geese and the babies singing opera. A PC Attila Reese has his trudging out and is playing cadences by the pump. Cows from Sunday Meadow ring like reindeer. And on the roof of the Handel Villa, see the women's welfare poofing, bloomer in the moon. <laughs> 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 and high above, in Salt Lake Farm, Mr. Yuda Watkin counts all night the white-faced sheep as they leap the fences on the hill, smiling and knitting and bleating just like Mrs. Yuda Watkin. <laughs> 31, 32, 46, 78. Knit one slip, one, one knit two together, half the slip stitch. Oh, eight hundred and sixty-five. Knit one slip, one, knit two together, half the slip stitch. Seven thousand two hundred. Four. Chariot sits next door. Lifts a to his lips, but nothing flows out. He shakes the tankard. It turns into a fish. So he drinks the fish. <laughs> <laughs> P.C. Attila Reese lops out of bed, dead to the dark, and still foghorning, and drags out his helmet from under the bed, but deep in the backyard lock of his sleeve, a mean voice murmurs. Willy-nilly, postman, asleep off street, walks 14 miles to the living post, does every day of the night, and right attacks hard and sharp on Mrs. Willy-nilly. Don't spit me, please, teacher! Whimpers his wife at his side, but every night of her married life she has been late to school. <laughs> Mrs. Rose Cottage's eldest, May, peels off her pink and white skin in a furnace, in a tower, in a cave, in a waterfall, in a wood, and waits there, raw as an onion, for Mr. Wright to leap up the burning tall hollow splashes of leaves like a brilliantine trout. Call me Dolores like they do in the stories. <laughs> <laughs> Alone until she dies. Bessie Beekhead, hired help. Born in the workhouse, smelling of the cowshed. Snores base and gruff on a couch of straw in a loft in Salt Lake Farm. And picks a posy of daisies in Sunday Meadow to put on the grave of Gomer Owen who kissed her once, when she wasn't looking, and never kissed her again, although she was looking all the time. <laughs> and the inspectors of cruelty fly down into Mrs. Butcher Beanin's dream to persecute Mr. Beanin for selling. Butcher's bloody apron, spring heels down Coronation Street, 
a finger, not his own, in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the owls are hunting. Look, over Bethesda graveyard, one owl hoots and swoops and catches a mouse by Hannah Reese, beloved wife. And in Coronation Street, which you alone can see, is so dark under the chapel in the skies, the Reverend Eli Jenkins, poet and preacher, turns in his deep towards dawn sleep and dreams of I stepped to die. He intricately rhymes to the music of Crith and Pipgore all night long in his druid's seedy night. Mr. Pugh, schoolmaster, fathoms asleep, pretends to be sleeping, <laughs> spies Foxy round the droop of his nightcap and whistles up, murder! <laughs> <laughs> Mary Ann Sailor's dreams of The Garden of Eden She comes in her smock frock and clogs Away from the cool scrub cobbled kitchen With the Sunday school pictures on the whitewashed walls And the sides of bacon on the ceiling hooks And goes down the cockle-shelled paths Of that apple pie kitchen garden Ducking under the gippo's clothes pegs And catching a raper on black currant bushes Past bean rows and onion beds And tomatoes ripening on the wall towards the old man playing the harmonium in the orchard, and sits down on the grass at his side and shells the green peas that grow up to the back of her frock that brushes the dew. In Doggy Street, so furthestly, Daybread, Polly Gutter, No Good Boyle, and Lord Cutlights sigh before the dawn that is about to be and dream of homes. Babies. Nothing. <laughs> Tick. Talk, tick, 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 Stand on this hill. This is Larray, you hill, old as the hills. High, cool, and green. And from this small circle of stone. Made not by druids, but by Mrs. Bean and Billy. You can see the whole town sleeping in the first of the dawn. You can hear the lovesick wood pigeons mooning in bed. A dog barks in his sleep, farmyards away. The, the town, town ripples like a lake in the waking haze. <laughs> Less than 500 souls inhabit the three quaint streets and scattered farmsteads that constitute this small decaying watering place, which may indeed be called a backwater of life without disrespect to its natives, who possess to this day a salty individuality of their own. Though there is little to attract the hill climber, the hell seeker, the sportsman, or the weekending motorist, the contemplative May is sufficiently attracted to spare its own leisurely hours, find in its cobbled streets its little fishing harbor, its several curious customs, and the conversation of its local characters. Some of that picturesque sense so frequently lacking in towns and villages that have been abreast of the times. The river Duai is said to abound in trap, but is much poached. The one place of worship with its neglected graveyard is of no architectural interest. <laughs> <laughs> the principality of the sky, like over our green hill, into a spring morning larked and crowed and fell. <laughs> <laughs> Who pulls the town hall bell rope? But blind Captain Cat. One by one, the sleepers are run out of sleep this one morning, as every morning. And soon you shall see the chimneys slow up flying snow as Captain Cat, in sailor's cap and sea boots, announces today with his loud get out of bed bell. The Reverend Eli Jenkins in Bethesda House grows out of bed into his preacher's black, combs back his bard's white hair, forgets to walk, pats barefoot downstairs, and opens the front door. Standing in the doorway and looking out at the day and up at the eternal hill <laughs> and hearing the sea break and the gab of the birds, remembers his own verses and tells them softly to an empty coronation street, which is just rising and raising its blind. Dear Walia, I know there are towns lovelier than ours, 
and sweeter hills and loftier far, and groves more full of flowers, and boskier woods more blithe with spring, and bright with birds adorning, and sweeter bards than I to sing their praise this beauteous morning. By mountains where King Arthur dreams, by pen my mower defiant, Laragube Hill a molehill seems a pygmy to a giant. By Karen Kennan, king of time, our heron head is only a bit of stone with seaweed spread where gulls come to be lonely. A tiny dingle is milkwood by golden grove neath Granga. But let me choose, and oh I should, love all my life and longer <coughs> to stroll among the trees and stray in Goosegog Lane on Donkey Down and hear the dewey sing all day and never, never leave this town. Reverend Jenkins closes the front door. His morning service is over. <laughs> <laughs> now, woken at last by the other bed sleepy head Polly put the kettle on, town hall bell, Lily Smalls, Mrs. Bean's treasure, comes downstairs with a cream of royalty, who all night long went larking with her full of sauce in the milkwood dark, and puts the kettle on the primus ring in Mrs. Bean's kitchen and looks at herself in Mr. Beanin's shaving glass over the sink and sees. <laughs> oh, there's a face. Where'd you get that hair from? I got it from an old tomcat. Give it back then, love. Oh, there's a perm. Where'd you get that nose from, Lily? I got it from my father, silly. You've got it on upside down. <laughs> oh, there's a conk. And look at your complexion. Oh no, you look. It needs a bit of makeup. It needs a veil. Oh, there's glamour. Where'd you get that smile, Lil? Never you mind, girl. Nobody loves you. That's what you think. Who is it loves you? Chantel. Come on, Lily. Cross your heart, then. Cross my heart. And very softly, her lips almost touching her reflection, she breathes the name on the shaving glass. Lily? Yes, Mom? Where's my tea, girl? Where do you think? In the cat box. <laughs> Coming up, Mom. Mr. Pugh in the schoolhouse opposite, takes up the morning tea to Mrs. Pugh and whispers on the stairs. Here's your arsenic, dear. And do we kill her biscuits? I've throttled the parrots. I've spat in the vases. I've put cheese in the mouth holes. Here's your uh, nice tea, dear. Too much sugar. You haven't tasted it yet. Dear. Too much milk, then. Has Mr. Jenkins said his poetry? Yes, dear. Then it's time to get up. Give me the glasses. No, not the reading glasses. <laughs> I want to look out. I want to see. She tucked her dress in her bloomers again. Oh, the baggage. <laughs> They'll arrest Polly Garner. Mark my words. Uh, what for, dear? For having babies. <laughs> Mary Ann says, opening her bedroom window above the tap room, calls out to the heavens. I'm 85 years, three months, and a day. I will say this for her. She never makes a mistake. <laughs> Me and David hurrying to the bakery, pushing in my shirt tails, buttoning my waistcoat. Ping goes a button. Why can't they sew them? No time for breakfast? Nothing! Breakfast! There's wives. <laughs> Me, Mrs. Daybread, one. Captain Charles and no old corset. Nice to be comfy. Nice to be nice. <coughs> Clogging on the cobbles to stir up a neighbor. Oh, Miss Sarah! Can you spare a loaf, love? Daybread forgot the bread. There's a lovely morning. And how are your boils this morning? Well, isn't that good news? It's a change to sit down. 
Thomas now. Me, Mrs. Day, bred too. Gypsy to kill in a silky scarlet petticoat above my knees. Dirty, pretty knees. Nothing else at all but a dab of scent, lolling gaudy at the doorway. Tell your fortune in the tea leaves, scowling at the sunshine and lighting up my pipe. Me, Lord Cutglass, and an old frock coat belong to Eli Jenkins, and a pair of postmen trousers from Bethesda Jungle, running out of doors to empty slops. Mine there, Rover, and running in again. Tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> Me, no good boy, up to no good at the wash house. <laughs> Me, Miss Price, in my pretty pink house coat. Theft at the clothesline. Natty as a Jenny Red. Yeah! <laughs> Me, Polly Garter, under the washing line, giving the breast in the garden to my bonny new baby. Nothing grows in our garden, just washing. And babies. <laughs> Where's their fathers live, my love? Over the hills and far away. You're looking up at me now, and I know what you're thinking, you poor little milky creature. You're thinking, you know better than you should be, Polly, and that's good enough for me. Oh, isn't life a terrible thing? Thank God. Now, frying pans. Kettles and cats purr in the kitchen. The town smells of seaweed and breakfast. Mary Ann Sailors. Praise is the Lord who made porridge. Mr. Pugh. Ah, remembers ground glass as he juggles his omelet. <laughs> <laughs> Willy nilly postman. Downs his last bucket of black brackish tea. And rumbles out Bambi back where the hen clucking, back where the hens twitch and grieve for their tea soaked sops. <laughs> Mrs. Willy nilly. Full of tea to her double chin brim, broods and bubbles of kettles on hissing hot range, always ready to steam open the mail. <laughs> the Reverend Elijah finds a rhyme and dips his pen in his cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Cat in his galley, blind and fine fingered, shavers his she fry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Cherryon, in their Donkey Street room that is bedroom, parlor, kitchen, and scullery, sit down to last night's supper of onions boiled in their overcoats, and broth of spuds, and bacon rind, and leeks, and cloves. You see that smudge on the wall by the picture of Auntie Blossom? That's where you threw the sago. <laughs> <laughs> you only missed me by an inch. I always miss Auntie Blossom, too. <laughs> Remember last night? In you reeled, my boy, as drunk as a deacon, with a big wet bucket and a fish frail full of stout. And you looked at me and you said, God has come home, you said. And then over the bucket you went, sprawling and bawling, with floors off, flagons and eels. Was I wounded? And then you took off your trousers and you said, does anybody want to fight? Give me a cat. And then you sang Bread of Heaven, tenor and bass. I always sing Bread of Heaven. And then you did a little dance on the table. I did. Drop dead. And then what did I do? And then you cried like a baby and said you were a poor drunk orphan with nowhere to go but the grave. And what did I do next, my love? And then you danced on the table all over again and said you were King Solomon Owen and I was your Mrs. Sheba. And then? And then I got you into bed and you snored all night like a brewery. <laughs> From bean and butchers and coronation street, the smell of fried liver sidles out with onions on his breath. <laughs> in the dark breakfast room behind the shop, Mr. and Mrs. Beanin enjoy between bites their every morning hullabaloo, and Mrs. Beanin slips the grisly bits under the tassel tablecloth to her fat cat. She likes the liver, Ben! Got to do, Bess. It's her brother's. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're eating pussy cats. Yes, Mom. Oh, you cat butcher! No one's doctored, Mom. What's that got to do with it? Yesterday we had mole. Lily! <laughs> Monday, otter. <laughs> and uh, Tuesday, shrews. Go on, Mrs. Green. He's the biggest liar in town. Now, don't you dare say uh, that, Mr. Bean. <laughs> Everyone knows it, Mom. Mr. Bean and 
never tells a lie. May I have your attention? Do you, Ben? Stuart McCullough, please call the main Of course not, Beth. Now I'm going to go after the little puppies with my cleaver. Lily! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Up the street, in the sailor's arms, Sinbid Sailors, grandson of Mary Ann Sailors, draws a pint from a sunlit bar. The ship's clock in the bar says half past eleven. Half past eleven is opening time. You see, the hands of the clock have stayed still at half past eleven for fifty years. <laughs> it is always opening time in the sailor's arms. <laughs> Here's to me, Sinbad. A school bell rings. Noses are wiped, heads picked, hair combed, paws scrubbed, ears boxed, and the children shrilled off to school. Fishermen grumble to their nets. No good boy goes out in the damp, dingy Zanzibar, ships the oars, and drifts slowly in the damp filled bay. Lying on his back in the unveiled water, among crab's legs and tangled lines, he looks up at the spring sky. I don't know who's up there, and I don't care. <laughs> Syrup. <laughs> sold in the post office. A car drives to market, full of fowls and a farm. Milk churns stand at Coronation Corner like short, silver policemen. And, sitting at the open window of Schooner House, blind Captain Cat hears all the morning of the town. Ricky Rice, Tommy Powell, uh, Maggie Richards, Billy Swansea with the dog's voice, uh, Nasty Humphrey, one of Mr. Waldo's, and there's Dickie Zalby, and the boys from Thai Pant. Perhaps they got the rash again. Oh, somebody's hit Maggie Richards. Two to one, it's Billy Swansea. Never trust a boy who barks. <laughs> Right again, it's Billy. And the children's voices cry away. <laughs> uh, it's willy nilly at Big Mew. Rat a tat real soft. Knocker's got a kid glove on. Who sent a letter to Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard? Careful now, she swabs the front glassy. Every step a bar of soap. Mind your sides, twelveses. That old Bessie would wax the front lawn to make the birds slip. <laughs> Morning, postman. Morning, Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard. Here's a letter for you with salmon dress envelope enclosed, all the way from both wells. A gentleman wants to study birds and can you have accommodations for two years to that vegetarian? No. You wouldn't even know he's in the house. He'd be out by the crack of dawn with his little telescope and his uh, breadcrumbs. And come in here all hours of the morning covered in feathers. I don't want persons in my nice, clean rooms. Breathing on my chairs? Cross my heart, he won't breathe. <laughs> and when he is feet on my carpets and sneezing on my china and sleeping in my sheets. He only wants a single bed, Mrs. Ivanor Pritchard. <laughs> and back she goes to the kitchen to polish her potatoes. <laughs> Captain Cat hears Willy Nilly's feet heavy on the distant coals. One, two, three, four. That's Mrs. Rose Cottage. What's today? Today she gets the letter from her sister in Gorseless. How is the twins' teeth? She's stopping at the schoolhouse. Yes? Morning, Mrs. Pugh. Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard won't have a gentleman in from both wells because he'll sleep in her sheets. And Mrs. Mayrose Cottage's sisters and Gorsel's twins have got to have them out. Give me the parcel. Ah, uh, it's for Mr. Pew, Mrs. Pew. Never you mind. What's in sight? Um, a book called Lives of the Great Poisoners. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Waldo on his way to the sailor's arms. Mr. Waldo? With an egg in it. There's a letter for him. It's another paternity summons, Mr. Waldo! <laughs> the quick footsteps hurry on along the cobbles and up three steps to the sailor's arms. Quick, Sinbad, find a stout and no egg in. People are moving now up and down the cobbled street. All the women are out this morning in the sun. 
can tell it's spring. I can't hear what they're gabbing about around the pump. Same as ever. Who's blocking whose eye? Who's having whose baby? Seen Polly Garter giving her belly an airing this morning. Oh, there ought to be a law. Seen Mrs. Bennion's new mob jumper? It's her old jumper died. Who's dying? Who's dead? There's a lovely day. Oh, the cost of soap flakes. <laughs> Somebody's coming. Now the voices around the pump can see somebody coming. Hush. There's a hush. You can tell by the noise of the hush. It's Polly Garter. Hello, Polly. Who's there? Me, love. That's Polly Garter. Hello, Polly, my love. Can you hear the dumb goose hiss of the wives as they peck and huddle or <coughs> flounce at a waddle away? Who cuddled you when? Which of their gandering hubbies moaned in milkwood for your naughty mothering arms and body like a wardrobe, love? Scrub the floor of the welfare hall for the mother's union social dance. Your one mother won't wriggle her roly-poly bum or pat her fat little buttery feet in that wedding-ringed holy, waltzing through the breadwinners, snatched from the cozy smoke of the sailor's arms, will grizzle and mope. A cock crows. Too late, cock. Too late. For well, the town's half open for this morning. The morning's busy as me. The women scratch and babble at Mrs. Organ Morgan's general shop, where everything is sold. Custard, buckets, henna, rat traps, shrimp nets, sugar, stamps, confetti, paraffin, hatchets, and whistles. Mrs. Ogmore Pritchard got a man in Bill Flair. And he got a little telephone to look at birds. Willy Nilly said. Remember her first husband? He didn't need a telescope. He looked at them undressing through the keyhole. And he used to shout tally ho. But Mr. Ogmore is a proper gentleman. Even though he hanged his colleague. Seeing Mrs. Butcher Bean if she said Butcher Bean put dogs in the mixer. Oh, go on, he's pulling her leg. And now, don't you tell her that. There's a dude. She'll think he's trying to pull it off and eat it. There's a nasty lot of here, when you come to think. Look at that no good boy oh now. Too lazy to wipe his snout. Going out fishing every day, and all he ever brought back was a Mrs. Samuel. Been in the water a week. And look at off me, off the milkman's wife that nobody's ever seen. He keeps her in the cupboard with the empties. And think of day bread with two wives. One for the daytime and one for the night. Men are brutes and the quiet. And how's Organ Morgan, Mrs. Morgan? You look dead beat. It's organ, organ all the time with him. Up until midnight, every night, playing the organ. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a martyr to music. <laughs> Mary Ann Saylor says very softly to herself as she looks at a Lorraine Hugh Hill from the bedroom where she was born. It's spring, Lorraine Hugh, in the sun in my old age, and this is the chosen land. And in willy nilly, the postman's dark and sizzling, damp, tea coated, misty, pygmy kitchen where the spinning cat kettles throb and hop on the range. Mrs. Willie Nilly steams open Mr. Mark Edwards' letter to Miss McFaulty Price and reads it aloud. From Manchester House, Lorraine. Mr. Mark Edwards, late of Twill, linen maker, <coughs> haberdasher, master tailor, and costumer. Among our satisfied customers, ministers of religion, and JP fitting by appointment. Advertising weekly in the Twill Bugle. Beloved McFaulty Price, my bride in heaven. I love you until death do us part, and then we shall be together forever and ever. A new parcel of ribbons has come from Carmarthen today, all the colors of the rainbow. I wish I could put one in your hair, a white one, but it cannot be. I dreamed last night that you were dripping wet, and you sat on my lap as the reverend passed by. I see you've got a mermaid in your lap, he said. He lifted his hat. He is a proper Christian, not like that cherry Owen who said, <laughs> You ought to throw her back. <laughs> My heart is in your bosom, and yours is in mine. May God be with you always, my family, and keep you lovely for me in his heavenly mansion. I must stop now and remain your eternal Mog Edward. And then a little message with a rubber stamp. Shop at Mog's. <laughs> the children spank and scamper, rough and singing out of school in the Dragon Tail Yard. 
and Captain Cap at his window says soft to himself the words of their song. Johnny Crack and Flossie Snail kept their baby in a milking pail. Johnny Crack and Flossie Snail, one would pull it out and one would put it back. Oh, it's my turn now, said Flossie Snail, to take the baby from the milking pail. My turn now, said Johnny Crack, to smack it on the head and put it back. Johnny Crack and Flossie Snail kept their baby in a milking pail. One would put it back and one would pull it out. And all it had to drink was ale and stout for Johnny Crack and Flossy Snail. Always that stout and ale was good for a baby in a milking pail. <laughs> the music is heard distinctly over Milkwood. It is the rustle of spring. Mrs. Daybread 1 and Mrs. Daybread 2 are sitting outside their house in Donkey Lane. One darkly, one plumply, blooming in the quick dewy sun. Mrs. Daybread, too, is looking into a crystal ball, which she holds in the lap of her dirty yellow petticoat hard against her dark thigh. Cross my palm with silver out of our housekeeping money. <laughs> what do you see, lovey? I see a feather bed with three pillows on it. There's a text above the bed. I can't read what it says, though. There are great clouds blowing. <laughs> now the clouds have blown away. God is love, the text says. That's our bed. Now it's vanished. The sun is spinning like a top. And who is it coming out of the sun? Why, it's a hairy little man with big pink lips. He got a walleye. It's day, it's day, Brent. Shh. Now the feather bed is floating back. The little man is taking off his boots. He's pulling his shirt over his head. He's climbing into bed. Go on, go on. There are two women in the bed. <laughs> he looks at them both with his head cocked on one side. Now he's whistling through his teeth. Now he's gripping his arms around one of the women. Well, which one? Which one? Oh, but I can't see anymore. There are great clouds blowing again. <laughs> mean old cloud. <laughs> <laughs> the morning is all sick. The Reverend Eli Jenkins, busy on his morning calls, nevertheless stops outside the welfare hall to hear Polly Garden as she scrubs the floors for the Mother's Union dance tonight. <laughs> Reverend 
projecting his horizontal to the town to visit the sick with jelly and pole. There goes the reverend, says Mr. Waldo, with his brawly and his odes. Phil Ruff's in bad, I'm on the treacle today. The silent fishermen flush down their pints. <coughs> oh, Mr. Waldo, sighs Simbid Sailors. I dote on that Gosmer Beeman. She's a lady all over. And Mr. Waldo, who is thinking of a woman soft as Eve and sharp as sciatica to share his bread pudding bed, answers. No woman that I know is. And if only Grandma die, cross my heart, I'd go down on my knees, Mr. Waldo, and I'd say, Miss Gossamer, I'd say. Tom, Dick, and Harry were three fine men, and I'd never see them again. And the morning school is over. The naughty forkling children tumble and rhyme. <laughs> boys, you come to boys, they make such a noise. Boys, 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 come along to me. Boys, 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 Miss Granny, where she said, or give her a penny. Go on, Granny! <laughs> Kiss me in Goose Cog Lane, or give me a penny. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Billy! <laughs> Kiss me in Goose God Wayne, Billy, or give me a penny, silly. Gwanny, Gwanny, I kiss you in Goose God Lane. <laughs> <laughs> now I haven't got to give you a penny. Gwanny, <laughs> call the boys, they make such a noise. Boys, 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 come along to me. Boys, 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 kiss Gwanny where she said, or give her a penny. Go on, Gwanny! Kiss me in milk wood or give me a penny. What's your name? Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dickie. <laughs> Kiss me in milk wood, Dickie, or give me a penny quickly. Ah, <laughs> uh, Gwanny, Gwanny. I can't kiss you in milk wood. Gwanny, ask him why. why. Because my mother says I mustn't. Carry, carry, custard. Give Gwenny a penny. Give me a penny. I haven't got any. Penny in the river, I'll kill you. Quick, quick, dirty dick. Be my little bit of a dick. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Boys, 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 kiss Gwenny where she said, And the shrill girls giggle and master around him and squeal as they clutch and thrash. And he blubbers away downhill with his patched pants falling, and his tears splashed blush burns all the way, as the triumphant bird like sisters scream with buttons in their claws, and hoop the name of his mother's shame and his father's wickedness with the loose, wild women of the hills. Cosmer being in high heels at his school, the sun hums down through the cotton flowers of her dress into the bell of her heart, and buzzes in the honey there, and couches and kisses. Lazy loving and boozed in her red buried breast. Eyes run from the trees and windows of the street, steaming gossamer and stripper to the nipples and the bees. She blazes naked past the sailor's arms, the only woman on the dyad and earth. Sinbid sailors places on her thighs still do damp from the first man growing cock crow garden, his reverend goat bearded hands. <laughs> She whispers to her salad day deep self. I want to gobble him up. I don't care if he does drop his H's. She tells the script and mother of the world, big beamed and eve hipped spring of herself. So long as he's all cucumber and hooves. Sinbid Sailors watches her go by. Demure and proud and school bar in her crisp flower dress and sanda fine hat with never a look or a lift or a wriggle. The butcher's unmelting ice maiden dog, veiled forever from the hungry hug of his eyes. Oh, Gosmer, why are you so proud? He grieves to his Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful Gosmer B. I wish, I wish that you were for me. I wish that you weren't so educated. <laughs> In the blind drawn, dark, 
dining room or schoolhouse. <laughs> Dusty and echoing as a dining room or box. Mr. and Mrs. Pugh are silent in their cold gray cottage pie. Mr. Pugh reads as he forks the shroud medium from Lives of the Great Poison. He has bound a plain brown paper cover around the book. Slyly, between slow mouthfuls, he sides spies up at Mrs. Pugh, poisons her with his eye, and then goes on reading. He underlines certain passages in secret. Persons with manners do not read at table, says Mrs. Pugh. She swallows a digestive tablet as big as a horse pill, washing it down with clouded pea soup water. <laughs> Some persons were brought up in pig styles. And pigs don't read at table, dear. <laughs> she flips dust from the broken cruet. It settles on the pie in a thin matte ring. Pigs can't read, dear. I know one. Who can? <laughs> Alone in the hissing laboratory of his wishes, Mr. Pugh minces among bad vats and jello bones, tiptoes through spinnies of murdering herbs, agony dancing in his crucibles, and mixes, especially for Mrs. Pugh, a venomous porridge unknown to toxicologists, which will scald and viper through her until her ears fall off like things. Her toes grow big and black as balloons, and steam comes screaming out of her navel. Yeah, you know best, dear, says Mr. Pugh, and quick as a flash, he ducks her in that soup. What's that book by your trough, Mr. Pugh? Uh, it's, a, it's a theological work, dear. Uh, Lives of the Great Saints. Hmm. I saw you talking to a saint this morning. Saint Polygar. She was murdered again last night. <laughs> Mrs. Organ Morgan saw her with Mr. Walden. And when they saw me, they pretended they were looking for nests, said Mrs. Organ Morgan to her husband, with her mouth full of fish as a pelican. But you don't go nesting in long combinations, I says to myself, like Mr. Walden was doing, or with your dress pulled nearly over your head, like Polly Garda. And they didn't fool me. One big bird gulp of the flounder's gone. She licks her lips and goes stabbing again. And when you think of all those babies she's got, all I can say is she better give up bird nesting, that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, isn't the right kind of hobby for a woman that can't say no, even to midgets? Do you remember Bob Speck? He wasn't any bigger than a baby, and he gave her two. But they're two nice boys, I will say that. Fred Spit and Arthur Spit. Sometimes I like Fred better, but sometimes I like Arthur. Who do you like best, Organ? Oh, Bach, of course. Bach every time for me. Organ, Morgan, you haven't been listening to a word I'm saying. It's organ, organ all the time with you. <laughs> and in the middle of her salty howling, nimbly spears a small flatfish and pelicans it whole. And Palestrina next, says Organ, Morgan. <laughs> the sunny, slow, lulling afternoon. Yawns and moons through the dozy town. The sea lulls, <coughs> laps, and idles in, with fishes sleeping in its lap. The meadow still is Sunday, the shut eye tasseled bulls. The goat and daisy dingles, nap happy and lazy. The dumb duck pond snoozes. Clouds sag and pillow on the radio hill. Pigs grunt in a wet wallow bath and smile as they snort and dream. They mud bask and snort in the pig loving sun. Their tails curled, they are wallach and slobber, and snored a deep smug after swill sleep. Donkeys angelically drowse on Donkey Down. Persons with manners, snaps Mrs. Cole Pew. do not nod at table. Mr. Pew cringes awake. He puts on a soft soaping smile at his satin gray under his nicotine egg yellow weeping walrus victorious mustache, worn <laughs> thick and long in memory of Dr. Griffin. You should wait till you retire to your sty, says Mrs. Pugh, sweet as a razor. <laughs> His spawning, measly quarter smile freezes. Sly and silent, he foxes into his chemist's den, and there, in a hiss and prussic circle of cauldrons and phials brimful with pox and the black death, cooks up a fricassee of deadly nightshade 
nicotine butt frog, cyanide, and bat spit. Go to your needle and stalactite hag and bed nag of a poker bat what? <clears throat> I beg your pardon, dear. <laughs> Captain Cat, at his window thrown wide to the sun on the clippered seas he sailed long ago when his eyes were blue and bright. Slumbers and voyages, earringed and rolling. I love you, rosy proverb, tattooed on his belly. He brawls with broken bottles in the fog and babble of the dark, dark bars, roams with a herd of short and good time crowds in every naughty point, and twines and sours with the drowned and blousy breasted dead. He weeps as he sleeps and sails. One voice of all he remembers most dearly is his dream, Bucket Stamp. Lazy, early, rosy with a flaxen thatch, whom he shared with Tom Fred the document, and many another sailor. Clearly and near to him speaks from the bedroom of her dust. In that gulf and haven, fleets by the dozen have anchored for the little heaven of the night. But she speaks to Captain Napping Cat alone. From Duck Lane, Jack, quack twice and ask for Rosie. She is the one love of his sea life that was sardined by women. <laughs> What seas did you see, Tom Cat, Tom Cat, in your sailoring days long, long ago? What sea beasts were in the wavery green, and you were my master? I'll tell you the truth. Seas barking with seals, blue seas and green, seas covered with eels and mermen and whales. What seas did you sail, old whaler, when, on the blubbery wave between Frisco and Wales, you were my bosun? As true as I'm here, dear Captain Cat's Tart, my landlubber rosy, my cozy love, my easy as easy, my true sweetheart. Seas green as a bean, seas gliding with swans in the seal-barking moon. What seas were rocking, my little deckhand? My favorite husband in your sea boots and hunger. My duck, my whaler, my honey, my daddy. My pretty sugar sailor with my name on your belly when you were a boy long, long ago. I will tell you no lies. I saw only one sea, the seesaw sea, with you rocking on it. Lie down, lie easy. Let me shipwreck in your thighs. Knock twice, Jack, at the door of my grave, and ask for Rosie. Rosie Probert. Remember her. She is forgetting. The earth which filled her mouth is vanishing from her. Remember me. I've forgotten you. I'm going into the darkness of the darkness forever. I have forgotten that I was ever born. Look, says a child to her mother as they pass by the window of Schooner House. Captain Cat is crying. Captain Cat is crying. Come back. Come back. Of the silences and echoes of the passages of the eternal night. He's crying all over his nose says the child. Mother and child move on down the street. He's got a nose like strawberries, the child says. And then she forgets him too. She sees in the still middle of the blue bagged bay no good boy, fishing from the Zanzibar. <laughs> no good boy who gave me three pennies yesterday, but I wouldn't. The child. <laughs> Boyo catches a whalebone corset. It is all that he has caught all day. <laughs> Bloody funny fish. <laughs> Mrs. Daybread, too, dressed only in a bangle, and gypsies up his mind's slow eye. She's wearing only a nightgown.
Hey, uh, Mrs. Daybread, too. Would you like this nice wet corset? No, I won't. Or a uh, bite of my little apple. <laughs> <laughs> she shakes her brass nightgown, and he chases her out of his mind. And when he comes gusting back, there in the bloodshot center of his eye, a geisha girl grins and bows in a kimono of rice paper. I want to be good, boyo, but uh, nobody will let me. He sighs as she rises politely. The lamp fades and the sea flock silently away. The afternoon is every day of the week. Goes off happy as Saturday to get drunk as a deacon as he does every night. I always say she's got two husbands, says Choriola. One drunk and... Oh, and one sober. And Mrs. Cherry simply says, And aren't I a lucky woman? Because I love you both. Mm -hmm. Evening, Cherry. Evening, Sinbad. What do you have? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sailor's arms is always open. Sinbad suffers to himself, heartbroken. Oh, Gossamer, open yours. Dusk is drowned forever now, until tomorrow. It is all at once night. The windy town is a hill of windows, and from the Larut waves, the light of the lamps in the windows call back the day and the dead that have run away to sea. All over the calling dark, babies and old men are bribed and lullabied to sleep. Hush a bye, baby. The sandman is coming. Rock a bye, Grandpa, on the treetop. When the tree blows, the cradle will rock. When the bell breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will go Grandpa Whiskers and all. Unmarried girls, alone in their privately bridal bedrooms, powder and curl the dance of the world. <coughs> they make in front of their looking glasses come hithering faces for the young men in the street outside, at the lamplit leaning corners, who wait in the all at once wind to roll and whistle. The drinkers in the sailor's arms drink to the failure of the dance. Skip it, huh? <coughs> Dancing ain't natural. Righteously, says Cheerio, who has just downed 17 pints of flat, warm, thin, Welsh bitter beer. <laughs> 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 Cheerio, 